It's Russell back with Gwinnett Lawns in beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. Today is February the 28th, 2021. This is the second video that I'm doing today. Uh, the other one is about the uh, battery replacement in the right with a nice upgrade that I think you're going to like. So check that video out. So on today's video, because it's going to be almost 80 degrees today in Atlanta, we have bipolar weather, it could be 80 one day and snow in the next day. So anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to be replacing my homemade shoot blocker and pulley system that I've had on the Hustler Trimstar 54 inch for, well, for last season. This is a, was a really good uh, quick stopgap measure to, to have a shoot blocker. Um, there are some things I don't like about this and the reason why I'm replacing it. Number one, it's um, <laughs> this thing has been bent and rebent so many times. It, it's, um, yeah. So at least it's, it's malleable, so I can do that. Uh, the pulley system has, um, well, it's been pretty reliable. This is some um, aircraft cable, just uh, plastic coated aircraft cable and a little pulley and so it, it works it works good but the problem is that even at full length this only lifts up a parallel to the ground uh, well actually perpendicular to the ground I want it to go all the way over 90 degrees and the reason is which is part of the reason why this thing has gotten bent so many times is that uh, sometimes you know, you're in a hurry to get the next piece of yard done and you bump something. Usually it's like a retaining wall or edge of a tree or something like that and it, it bends this. So what I'm going to be replacing it with, and I'm going to show you how to install, is this. This is the green guard and I'm going to link uh, Jeremiah's information down below. Now the reason that I, I wanted this is I wanted a motorized shoot blocker. And I wanted one that was really super heavy duty. I want to show you guys this. This thing right here is absolutely massive. Now if you go on his website, he's got two versions. One of them uses like a, um, a window motor, regulator motor. Um, this happens to be the magnetic kit. This is the no drill kit but you can get it with that motor or you can get it with this motor right here. And let me tell you something, this thing is super heavy. I don't know how much this weighs, but this is all metal. This is made in the USA. It's got metal gears in it. This thing is probably gonna outlast the mower. But this is a super high quality, um, you know, it's a super high quality piece. I'm extremely happy with this and I haven't even put it on the mower yet. So we've got that and it comes with this flap right here. Now obviously this flap is way bigger as far as the depth than we need. I'm going to show you how to measure it. I'm going to show you how to make a, a quick little template to see which version of this mount that you need. He has two versions. He has the regular and what's called the slim. I believe the slim, the motor is orient, oriented up. So if I was going to put this on the right 36i, I believe I would need the slim because I don't have enough room horizontally. It comes with some nice directions that are, the pictures are actually in color. It comes with several bags of hardware, which we'll get into. And it's got this really nice harness, which they, it's got a toggle switch. It's got a, a handlebar mount. If you, this will fit on zero turns, walk behind, standers. Um, so depending on where you want to mount it. I, I think I know where I'm going to mount it on this so that it's easy to get to, but it's a, this is very, this is automotive grade stuff. This is not cheap at all. All the connectors have been uh, shrink wrapped. It's got really good quality connectors on here. It's got a 20 amp fuse for the positive side of the battery terminal. And if you have a mower that has a battery or doesn't have a battery, He's got directions for both, and that's what some of these extra connectors are for. But I'm very pleased just opening the opening the box, and of course he's uh, he's got some some zip ties 
that are included. And also these neat little, these are magnetic zip tie mounts. So you don't have to drill in your mower at all because I don't drill in my mower. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all this stuff back in the box and I'm going to remove my old chute blocker and get that out of the way. I'm gonna show you how to measure your mower, which is really quick and easy to see which of these mounts will work on yours. All right, so this is probably what you're gonna start with. If you've got a Hustler or any other mower, you wanna go on his website and I made a cardboard template. This is basically the dimensions of what the um, assembly is gonna be like. Uh, you've got about eight inches this way, nine inches this way, so it's gonna easily be able to fit here. So just make sure if, if the dimensions here weren't right, um, it would be shorter because the motor would be standing up. So there's, there's two different options. And if you have any questions, I'm sure you can call, give Jeremiah a call. All right, so with that done, we're going to get the no drill mount. And I'm gonna take the plate here. As you can see, this plate is Enormous. I'm going to have to cut some of it or quite a bit of it off uh, this way. But yeah, it's way, way big. But that's all right. So generally, this. So I can either keep the magnets here like this, or I can put a spacer up and raise them up uh, another inch. I don't think, because I've got to cut so much off this, I'm thinking that's probably not gonna be worth me spending the time taking these, uh, what is it, uh, two, four, six, seven magnets out. All right, so what I've done is I basically just took the assembly and placed it on here. Now you have to be very careful. Do not get your fingers under these magnets because you will smash them like you cannot believe. And the guard itself, this is an aluminum guard. You could also get the rubber one. I'm just going to kind of temporarily put this in here. There are two square neck carriage bolts that go in here. Okay. Let me just put this on here so it won't flop out. I'm going to give you guys a close up of this, but the idea is that when this is uh, closed, you want it to be able to kind of seal the edge of the deck. And once this is on here, you pretty much have to use a pry bar. Don't use it under the magnet, just use it under one of the corners to get this up. Let me show you real quick what this looks like. So you can kind of get the idea. So when this is in its closed position, you want the face of this to seal against the edge of the deck. Now you can see I've got a little bit of space right here and I don't have here. So that means I need to move this assembly slightly forward. Uh, I'm gonna get a, uh, a rubber mallet just to tap it. It will move a little bit because it's magnetic and then I'll let you see what, uh, what it looks like. All right, so I'm just going to very gently tap the base, perfect, just like that. All right, so now this will seal, and I'm saying seal loosely, but it just rests against there. So obviously with my curved deck, I'm going to have to bend this around, but that's not going to be an issue. But what I want to make sure to do is to get the placement of the motor and everything square. And in the directions, it has a dimension that you try to shoot for. 
So, all right, so uh, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of leave that here right now and we're going to go to the battery box and look at the harness and try to see where we're gonna put our toggle switch. All right, so depending on what model you have, uh, you may have the same exact model or you may have a completely different brand, but we need to get to the battery box and my battery box is sealed and it happens to be, what is this, 11 millimeter and it's got these J hooks. So I'm going to loosen this, take the top off and then show you what the uh, terminals look like. All right, so I wanna give you guys a quick uh, sample of what this looks like when it's operational. I just have the, uh, a temporary battery hooked up. So you can stop it halfway, a little bit more, all the way. Very nice. All right, so what I've decided to do as far as mounting is I have this mag magnet with the loop in it that I had for the <clears throat> manual system. So I'm gonna mount this right here so it'll be easy to get to. And this works good because that's gonna be shoot up, shoot down, okay? And then the next thing that I'll have to do is I come down here to where our battery is and there are the supplied terminals that are already done. Black to negative and red to positive. And there's the fuse. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route it right down this hole right here. And I'll zip tie everything because this is a lot, a lot more cable than I need for this application. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and let you see what it looks like after it's all nice and tidy. All right, so this is probably how I'm gonna have the switch mounted. I've just got a magnetic mount here. I've used some of the hardware that was actually in the kit that I didn't use and then I'll be able just to uh, hit the up button and then the down. So I'll tighten that up if I'm sure that's where I'm going to mount it and then up under here, I've got everything obviously connected. I'm gonna make this uh, look neater with some zip ties. I'm gonna go ahead and put the battery cover on to make sure everything fits in there. And then I'll show you what that looks like next. All right, so I've kind of got the wiring the way I want it. I went ahead and tightened the toggle switch and I'm gonna use these cable ties and the holes that are already here. Um, I moved this back just a little bit to keep it away from the, the deck handle. And I'm going to probably 99% route the cable like this. And now with it, uh, I tighten that up just a little bit. Very smooth operation. All right, so I've got to make a trip to the hardware store to get a few nuts and bolts. And then we were going to have to cut the bottom of the flap off just a little bit so it's equal or even with the, um, even with the deck. So I think I'm going to have to take about uh, probably two inches off. But we'll do that after I finish routing all the cables. All right, so let me show you what I've done. I have measured how much I need to cut off so that it will fit flush with the bottom of the deck. And I'm going to just take my angle grinder. This is very pretty thin aluminum, so I'm just going to go across there like that. All right, so I just took my uh, flapper disc, which is the same disc I use to um, do my mower blades. It's just uh, like a 60 grit. So this is not sharp anymore. And 
Beautiful. All right, so the only thing left to do is going to need to bend this um, along the curve here because the opening extends to about right here. So I'm just going to um, see about bending that right there. All right, so let me show you how I bent this. <clears throat> so I did it in the vise and I kept the bolts in the holes where it would attach to the mount because it's possible that when you bend this, because this is weaker than this, this could misalign the holes. So I just took uh, two pieces of, I think this was some like one by 12, and I had previously scribed a mark on the back where I needed it to conform to the mower. So I just put this in the vise like this, and the jaws of the vise were on this, not this, okay? So let me kind of show you how I set this up. And I put the, where I wanted it to bend, I, la I lined the scribe mark up with the corner or the edge. This is hard to set up. I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Okay, so I have the scribe mark lined up with the edge of this. I tighten this down pretty tight, and I just bent this piece like this. By doing this, it will, it will stretch this piece of aluminum so that it stays in line with the holes. So I've got a perfect, I don't know what that is, maybe a 30 degree bend. So let's put this back on the mower and see what it looks like. So I went ahead and got some bolts and got this so that the cable is nice and tight out of the way. I just need to zip tie this in here and I need to get a couple more of these magnetic holders because um, there's really, you really need more than what's in the kit. But yeah, so all I'm going to have to do now is I'm going to take this lanyard. Now because of this, because it's a magnetic mount, it is possible uh, that if you hit something hard enough, it'll, you know, can knock this off. So um, what I probably will do is I'll just clip it to around here and then run the chain. I don't know, probably, I don't know, I'll figure it out. But that way if the thing actually gets knocked off, that it's not going to go into the mower. So. I'll do that, and yeah, this is uh, very, very, very impressed with this. Very impressed with this. So much better than, than my uh, homemade one. That was very good for a season, but hey, this is phenomenal. So anyway, guys, I'll put the link to the uh, green guard down there. If you've got a different mower, a different setup, uh, it's, this is not hard at all. The hard, I could probably do this under an hour. The hardest part was getting to the battery because the battery is way up under there. Um, if I put one of these on the right, it would be a lot easier because the battery is, is exposed. So, uh, but I definitely would have to use the mount, the slim mount where this motor is sticking up because I don't have much space here on the right. So we'll see what happens, but I will give you guys an update after I use this for a little while. And talk about its durability, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. But so far, I have absolutely no complaints. And uh, yeah, this is nifty. I really like this. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And as always, I will see you on the next video.